Kristen. This is Maria Kosichkina. It's a pleasure meeting you. Uh, my current topic is negotiation in multicultural environment. And as a brief, um, brief background of myself, um, I'm procurement and project management professional with uh, more than 10 years experience managing international suppliers and staff providing successful negotiations in multicultural environments, project management, auditing, design and procurement relationships, <clears throat> develop, developing procurement relationships, designing procurement regulations, and delivering tangible. When negotiation and multicultural environment, you should be aware of the impact of verbal and nonverbal communication. For instance, simple hand gestures or expressions have various meaning around the world. Unless you are aware of these meanings, you might find yourself in an embarrassing position, which might put you in a disadvantage. Additionally, it's important to understand the different, nego the different negotiation styles that exist in contrasting cultures. Generally speaking, the way North Americans or East Western and Europeans negotiate is different from the way Africans or Asians negotiate. To be successful, you should recognize the cultural style of negotiation you will encounter and modify your approach accordingly. Next question. What is the impact of verbal and nonverbal communication on multicultural negotiation? Nonverbal communication differs significantly among cultures. Therefore, if you are involved in multicultural negotiations, you should never use gestures like hand signals. For instance, one acceptable hand signal in Italy is a terrible insult in China. And a common hand signal in the United States is perceived as an insult in South American countries. Exhibiting body language that is appropriate in Western Europe is not necessarily appropriate while interacting with the team in the Middle East. For example, uh, while negotiating in the Middle East, it's common to be very physically close to negotiating partner. In such a case, physical distance might be interpreted as an unwillingness to negotiate on a personal basis. In contrast, if you are negotiating in Germany, and you violate the personal space on a negotiating partner, it could offend the individual and make the situation uncomfortable. Effective negotiation requires a broad understanding of different styles of communication. This is so you can modify your negotiation style accordingly. North America or Western Europe may be classified as the verbal cultures. In cultures such as this, Words have a significant meaning. Um, there is time sensitivity to engage in discussion and reach compelling points. The logic is linear. There is a clarity in communication, and information is used to stress a point or reach a con conclusion. Asia and Africa, though, may be broadly classified as visual cultures. In these cultures, nonverbal communications are more important than verbal communications. Logic is not linear, but lateral, and discussion often cover various points before arriving to conclusion. It may take hours to negotiate. Emotion and intuition play an important role in negotiation. There is always the background over there, and you might not recognize it on the first view, so it may take more work and research to figure out. It's more about relationships. There may initially be a lack of clarity in communication, until a conclusion is reached. These cultures are um, use information not only to exchange facts, but to establish association relationships. Next question, what are the major cultural differences in styles of negotiation? Well, speaking about the time. Well, time is always different. Um, depending in the culture and the country you are in and the culture you are negotiating with. When involved in multicultural negotiation, you should be aware that different cultures perceive time differently. Time is not an absolute. 
rather it's relative. For example, if you are in Germany and have scheduled a negotiation to start at 10 a.m., then you can reasonably expect everyone to be there on time. However, participants will likely not be punctual in Venezuela, Brazil, I would say Ukraine, the same thing. <laughs> As an example, it's a good example. It's critical to remember the sensitivity of time on a global scale. Different cultures use time as a pressure point, an enabler, a constraint, a strategy, or a tactic to gain advantage in negotiation. Time becomes an issue when Western Europeans and North Americans negotiate in Asia or Africa. Negotiation time for Europeans and North Americans is measured in hours and days, while negotiation times in Asia and Africa are measured Hmm, let's say, in months, years, it depends on your lucky finish in a month. Therefore, Western Europeans and North Americans should dedicate sufficient time when both preparing for negotiation and establishing relationships when negotiating with their Asian and African counterparts. Another factor is leadership and different aspects of leadership in different cultures. Group dynamics also vary among cultures. For example, if you are negotiating in Japan, you will typically find a tight-knit team with a well-defined leader. If you are negotiating in the United States, however, you may find yourself engaged in simultaneous conversations with three or four different members of the partner's negotiation teams or even with a few teams of the counterpart. If you are doing business in Asia or Africa, you may find it difficult to figure out, to, to actually find out who is actually the decision-making authority. Um, so it, it's, it's also very important to keep in mind. Another point that affects team leadership and dynamics is the degree of government, government involvement in negotiations. It's also a factor. While in North America and Western Europe, the government has a minor or no role in negotiation. In, more, um, in some countries in Asia and Africa, the government plays an influential role in negotiation. And sometimes we live in, if we live in, in, in Asia, if we live in um, Europe or United States, we forget about the things. And it's, it's always important to keep in mind. <clears throat> Another factor is the pace of negotiations. As previously discussed, in Asia and Africa, negotiations take place over months, if not years. However, this is not the case with North American and Western Europeans, who make the common mistake of thinking they can complete negotiation in days when negotiating with Asian and African partners. Generally, Western Europeans and North Americans believe negotiations have reached a formal conclusion when their counterparts have signed an agreement. <laughs> the signing of the contract in Asia and Middle East and Africa doesn't end a negotiation. Well, in fact, it marks the start of negotiations. Consequently, once Western Europeans and North Americans have signed a contract with Chinese, Japanese, or African con counterparts, they may have no renegotiated issues. Um, <clears throat> they would they would like to they will um, they will have to negotiate because they are going through some issues which arise and they need to go over the facts and details again. Um, so they are not already finalized. They need to get back to the points and go over, try to find a point of contact, try to negotiate and get not only formal but verbal and um, other kind of agreement that will be helpful. Um, the next factor is personal relationships, and this is a huge role. For Western Europeans and North American cultures, negotiations are concluded once the agreement is signed. Their relationship with suppliers is primarily defined by the formal agreement. Therefore, personal relationships with their partners is not vital. Hmm. This is a sharp contrast to the cultures in Asia, Africa, and South America, where negotiations start with the contact um, when the contract is signed. So it's just start, it's just the beginning. For these cultures, the contract is not the definitive statement of the relationship between negotiation partners. Their relationship 
continues to evolve through negotiation. It's a pace. Such relationships have low business content and high social content. Thus, if you are doing business in Asia or Africa or South America, establishing a personal relationship is critical to your success. Well, as a summary, um, I would like to add that to be an effective negotiator, you should be aware of the key differences in negotiating styles that exist among major cultures. Based on this diversity, you should try and identify your position and that of your partner on issues like the pace of negotiation, the topics of discussion, the use of time, and team composition and dynamics. All those factors matter and you should definitely be well prepared to, um, to be caught by unusual situation and you should know this background to be prepared appropriately react on it. This will really impact your success. This is it for this article and I really want to appreciate your uh, patience with waiting <laughs> for this record. I'm not sure how good or how it's actually the first time I'm writing this this way. Um, maybe it works good. So I want to thank you. Thanks so much, Dustin.